Hey everybody, David here, back with another video. And today, we're going to be talking about basic nutrition and how that affects your fitness goals and athletic performance. Now, before we get started, I just want to tell you all a few things. The first thing is that I am NSCA CSCS certified. So, I'm just going to be talking about the basics in this video of dieting or nutrition. I highly encourage you, if you're serious about changing your diet up, to get in contact with a dietitian or a certified nutritionist because my belief is everybody's nutritional needs are different. So, I don't want you to just base your information solely off this video because I don't want anything bad happening to you. you everybody's body's different, like I said. So they're going to need different things. Second thing is, if you enjoy the video, make sure to drop a thumbs up on the video. And also subscribe to the channel with notifications on so you do not miss when I post videos. I try to post two videos a week for you all. And yeah, since that is out of the way, let's talk about some basic nutrition today. So, nutrition has a very important role in your workout programs and rest and exercise recovery. Basically, you can't lift and you can't have good endurance without having a proper diet or having your nutrition locked in. So I'm going to be talking about free micronutrients today. The first one we're going to be talking about is carbs. After that, we're going to be talking about Proteins, and then after that, we're going to be talking about fats. Let's hop into pro, uh, carbs first. So carbs are your go-to energy source. This is what your body prefers no matter what intensity you're at. Your body's always going to want those carbs first. Depending on how active you are, you're going to need anywhere between 3 grams to 9 grams per kilogram of your body weight. And I would say that 8 to 9 grams, that's on the high end. So if you're an elite distance runner or if you're an elite sprinter, that's what you're going to need, that 8 to 9. But if you're just in the gym doing some resistance training and trying to live a healthy lifestyle, then 3 to 4 to 5 grams would be suffice. Also want to talk about you should be putting high quality carbohydrates in your body. Things such as whole grains, so rice fruits and vegetables, those three should be a pivotal part of your diet or your nutrition plan. Next one we're going to be talking about is protein. And a lot of people put protein on this high pedestal, which I understand, and the reason why they do it is because it's the basic building block of muscle. When you're looking to build muscle or just be toned, protein is going to be your repair or your recovery micronutrient. You should be aiming for anywhere between 1.2 to 2.2 grams per kilogram of your body weight daily for protein, which that will support your muscles in muscle building and resistance training recovery. You got to remember with protein and carbs, variety is key. So having good protein sources such as red meat, fish, usually the two go-to fishes are tuna and salmon, and then chicken. Also, you can add beans into this too, pinto, black beans, and then also dairy. With dairy, I like to go towards a non-flavored Greek yogurt, non-fat flavored Greek yogurt, and then also I drink coconut milk or almond milk. I don't really drink regular milk that much, but for me, those are my diet, or not diet, excuse me, my diet, dairy sources. <laughs> dairy sources, excuse me. So now we're going to talk about fats. The fats are just not fillers in the diet. They also are very essential to your overall health. Exorbing the vitamins and it provides energy to the body. You want to make sure the fats are balanced. So 20 to 35% of your daily intake should come from fats. Especially in the unsaturated realm, you should try to avoid trans fats and saturated fats as much as you can. And you're going to get those fats from nuts, which nuts also have protein in it. They're not the best protein source, but they do have protein in it. Avocados and fish. 
Here we go with fish again. Like I said, tuna and salmon are going to be your best bets, but they can also help you with this fat. Making sure to have a well-balanced diet between these free micronutrients is important to know. And next, I'm going to be talking about the application a little bit. So dialing in your micronutrient intake just isn't about the numbers, so how much calories you're getting in a day. It's about fueling your body for performance and recovery, kind of what I mentioned before. Having the proper diet or nutrition plan can keep those energy levels at a good balance. Support that muscle repair post-workout and get you ready for your next workout because if you're not eating properly, then the muscles are not going to have energy to build muscle or give you that proper recovery to get you ready for tomorrow's workout. Make sure you don't forget when we're talking about diet, you have proper hydration and electrolytes. Try to stay away from stuff that's got a lot of sugar in it. Not a lot of people know this about hydration uh, drinks, but you want to focus on something that has kind of like a salty taste to it. Not like Gatorade from the store. I would say with that, it has a lot of sugar in it and it has a lot of dyes in it and stuff that it they put in there to make it kind of more commercially successful. The stuff you want to be focusing on has a little salty taste because it's going to have that sodium, that magnesium, and those electrolytes that you need to prevent cramping and maintain a peak performance in that athletic setting. Now, when it comes to building muscle, that protein is going to be important with a caloric surplus in that. I usually have to tell my clients 200 to 300 calories starting off to get used to it. It's probably that sweet spot. And then once you get used to it, I would say you know maybe go to 500, 600 max, but that's like pushing it in my opinion. So 200 to 300 that is that good caloric surplus. And like I said before, to know how much calories you should be eating a day, I would track it on an app. There's a lot of free apps that you can track it on or talk to a medical professional to get the best results. It's not just about what you eat, it's about how you train and you recover. I keep mentioning that a lot, but incorporating strength training and allowing your body to rest appropriately with the proper diet are, is just as important as that diet. You can also take supplements to help out with this resistance training and muscle mass. So there's things such as creatine, there have been studies that show creatine might not be effective for every individual, but it might work for some individuals, so keep that in mind. And also, I do not recommend this supplement much, but B BCAA, so branched chain amino acids, I feel like if you have a proper diet, you're going to get that enough, but those are an option for you, uh, branched chain amino acids uh, supplements. And this is not me trying to recommend you any supplements. You should do your research before you hop into any supplements or talk to that medical professional. But those are two that people associate with muscle building, so creatine and branched chain amino acids. But supplements can never replace a nutrient-dense diet with all those micronutrients involved. Hopefully all of you learned something about the diet today that you can take into your training program and implement with. Like I said before, diet's just as important as lifting those heavy weights or that endurance training that you're doing. So making sure you have that dialed in, taking all the right steps is just as important as that rest recovery and that resistance training. Let me know in the comments below how your diet is looking. And yeah, that's all I have for you all today. I will see you all on the next one.